what a location and what a road. I am right now in Škoda land in Prague driving this. This is the Škoda Fabia Monte Carlo and this is the key of the vehicle. This is to lock the car, this is to open the boot of the vehicle and this is to unlock the car. Skoda logo placed here, does not get a flip key which is the case with most Skoda and Volkswagen group budget cars of course and straight away I'm going to be opening the engine bay, it's available with a 1 litre engine but this one is the Monte Carlo so it gets the 1.5 litre TSI Evo engine, there's insulation right there and the engine sounds a bit noisy but then it is really crazy in terms of performance, we will drive it of course on these beautiful roads and give it the beans but it gets all LED lights it says Skoda crystal lighting in fact this is the LED DRL which actually converts into the indicator as well you get a headlight washer fog lights are not LEDs this is a functional air vent as well and aggressive bumper treatment too you get front parking sensors this is the radar panel obviously it gets a lot of ADAS functions as well and it gets a towing hook right there now this is not a small car because the size of this car is big it is more than 4.1 meters in terms of length and the wheelbase is almost 2.6 meters which makes it a very not apt car for India because the length is more than 4 meters it says Monte Carlo right here in fact the tire size happens to be 215 45 17s I like the design of the alloy wheels you see the parking sensor is placed on this side as well because it's got self park as well gloss black finishing on the outside rear view mirrors on the roof as well and this is for the lane keepers is the camera this is for the rain sensors wiper quality is absolutely phenomenal what a beautiful looking car in fact it gets tints which are legal here of course and you see a lot of Skoda cars almost everywhere I have seen more Skoda cars today than I've seen in my entire life this is obviously the antenna let's get into the rear for starters it gets an all black cabin which looks quite sporty center passenger gets a head you get a center armrest with twin cup holders and you can recline this in 60 40 format to increase the boot carrying capacity nice treatment these are fabric seats of course you get rear ac vents you get two usb c charging sockets you get magazine holders phone holder as well legroom and new room is fine not great because under thigh support is kind of on the poor side but you get lumbar adjust and the dashboard will remind you of the slavia it's very similar to the fabia sorry Slavia and press this one touch up and down power windows I think child lock is activated at the moment door pockets are decent sized and at the rear again typical Skoda design language looks quite nice says Skoda boldly here Fabia written there and you get a rear wiper washer rear spoiler with high mounted stop lamp of course and that is the indicator again everything seems to be LED here this is for the fog light vessel comes fingers of truth hunting for the exhaust which is placed right there yeah you saw the exhaust of course now let's do one thing let's open the boot of the vehicle and here is the camera which actually gets a washing function as well that's kind of cool for a hatchback this guy has a lot of features decent sized boot this is the warning triangle this is the first aid kit and high visibility jacket premium in terms of quality says Fabia right there just in case you open the boot and don't remember which car you are in there's some storage space here spare wheel is not an alloy 185 65 15 yeah I have kept the bottles there so they don't make any sound so spare wheel is obviously smaller size now I need to push this actually this bag is so heavy now it is really making it difficult for me to actually arrange the boot and you obviously get isofix child seat anchors as well I no that's not the isofix child seat man anchors here top teeth are it says and there's a hook here as well parcel shelf of course pull this and shut this that was easy let's get to the front firstly it gets request sensors for both the front doors just put your hand in it'll automatically unlock no longer you have to press a button to do that I mean obviously in these cars you don't have to but a lot of Korean and Japanese cars have that door pockets are big enough at the front nice design here red color treatment one touch for everybody soft touch material sort of carbon fiber finish again a lot of the interior is going to remind you of the Slavia sporty bucket seats and huh? they are not having adjustable headrests but they are sporty very sporty very nice manual adjust of course says Fabia here tells you what should be the tire pressure right there yeah but where is the pressure written <laughs> that's not written that's weird anyways let's get inside and let me shut this okay can you see the pedals yeah they have this sort of chrome finish as well there's a secret storage space right here headlight controls automatic headlights automatic wipers everything is there in this car which is amazing fully digital instrument cluster this is a nice screen which has a lot of features so you can get into the car function and then you can actually change the cockpit the way you want to see it why is it not responsive <laughs> don't know why it's gone for a toss yeah now that has changed and you can obviously customize it to the moon and back steering feels nice to hold but notice one thing this is a three spoke unit so here you have a spoke which is not the case with the india 2.0 cars again very similar buttons as well it obviously gets cruise control and a lot of controls for the audio system and stuff here is the cruise control lever and let me actually adjust yeah adjust the steering wheel which is adjustable both for reach as well as rake there's a ticket holder right here auto dimming of course there's no sunroof in this car but 
that's something people don't really give importance to in developed countries mirror here same is the case here as well you get a nice mirror meanwhile these are the ac controls which are different from india 2.0 cars it gets self park i press this button they're saying parking not available because obviously we're not in gear this is for the parking sensors this is for the drive mode selector stop start and this is to lock the car there's some space for the key twin cup holders manual handbrake with leather finishing and there's a 12 volt charging socket here chin to into space comes down nicely and smoothly decent size there's a card holder here and nice manual and everything but hard plastics are in plenty this is finished in red those vents are similar to the slavia of course steering feels really very nice to hold and it also gets seat heating yeah seat heating is also there this car there it shows okay you have got two steps for the seat heating and then you can browse through a lot of information here so typical skoda menu let's get into reverse this is the reverse parking camera it obviously gets no it does not get adaptive guidelines it gets them in this particular display not in this i think the camera quality could be a lot better but for a hatchback this car is really loaded with a ton of features which is super impressive like look at it sporty comfortable seat six airbag height adjustable seat belts at the front and this is very similar to the original octavia you get a sunglass holder here you get light placement right there again very similar to the first generation octavia which kind of is a deja vu for me personally speaking i think we should just drive this car because in the interior space it's just like other skoda cars very nice for a hatchback for sure okay look at the car coming there which is quite nice when you turn off the car and then it exactly tells you the journey data here which is quite cool let's turn on the car and there it turns it says welcome fabia here you get two usb c charging sockets there is a something like this here as well and on the right now you've got this strap the co-passenger seat actually gets isofix child seat mounts which is nice we get into the home function because i want to get into menu i want to get into vehicle and then i want to get into the settings because i'm actually going to turn off the traction control system their traction control system turned off we're going to get into sport drive mode it has eco normal sport and individual wherein you can actually configure a few things so let me just change the individual driving mode it lets me configure the steering drive acc and air conditioning let's actually just get this into sport drive mode here we are into sport drive mode we get into drive and uh, we will get it into sport it's actually into sport here we go time to go thing is that performance is something which would obviously be the standout here right it has to be so we are going to come to a halt here left foot on the brake let's get out of this menu right foot on the accelerator revving the motor doesn't rev it just bogs down so launches at 1000 rpm slow 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 and then it picks up there's some amount of turbo lag but performance in the mid range is really very nice and pushes really hard and strong in the top end but red line is very fast because red line comes in slightly above 6000 rpm so yes it's not a very high driving engine this is the same engine which we get in india because this is the 1.5 liter tsi evo engine producing 150 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque they also have a 1 liter tsi engine which is available in two states of tune but that's not important because this is the monte carlo so obviously it's got more punch more oomph but the gearbox just does not let me launch which is very disappointing and sad because i was like okay now let's go but box it down i think it drops at least one second while launching that's kind of sad steering is light at low speeds quite light and even with traction control off there is no wheel spin because tires are nice big and grippy it becomes quite vocal in the top end of the rev range it sounds quite sporty actually it's a very sporty engine as such there's some like lack of feel in the center position but for the most part you have nothing to complain about because body roll is well contained and this is a car whose chassis suspension has been set up for a great ride quality and amazing handling so it has a good balance of both in terms of performance you will not complain because it just feels so sprightly it's a lightweight car obviously because this is a hatchback and performance is something which will put a big smile on your face the only thing is you miss paddle shifters because you're like okay oh, i need a downshift let me shift with paddles no it does not let you do that i can push this on the right side to turn on manual shifting here we are i am in top gear seventh gear of course seven speed box there is a train which actually goes from here so you have to manually look because there's no farter as such to stop you and now i'm actually going to shift to the lowest gear possible here in first gear yeah it will not hold on to a gear it will automatically shift which is kind of sad you know it doesn't give you any manual control of things this car feels amazing to drive you actually feel you're driving a bigger car because they've put all the features of their bigger cars into this small chintu mintu fabia which is no longer chintu mintu because of the size now more than 4.1 meters it cannot be launched in india because this car will attract 
higher duty making it unfeasible however i am doing my calculations and i realized that the frongs has been launched at a very high price especially for the turbo variant so if skoda actually launches this in india with a 1 liter tsi engine there is a huge scope of this selling okay brakes are nice and strong yeah very nice strong brakes on this car and tires have ample grip but if this car is launched in india trust me it can do well because the i20 n line is selling at almost 14 and a half lakhs they said 14 lakhs with a 1 liter tsi engine will get the job done and that engine is localized and obviously because this car is sharing so much with other skoda cars they can share a lot with the slavia and the kushak and price this around 14 15 lakhs on road mumbai of course people will definitely buy it because the france cost more than 15 lakhs for the top end variant okay it has got heads up display and all that but you don't really care about it the driving experience of this car is just next level it is underpinned by the mqb a0 platform very robust very nice and it just feels unbelievable to drive it has got slew of adas functions so right now it's telling me speed sign detection what is the speed in this town right now so it's at 50 km so we have slowed down to like 44 km right now all oh, sorry 44 km per hour and because i'm the land of skoda cars you can see a lot of skoda cars here so there is the recent generation the third generation of the octavia which is my personal favorite honestly especially the rs245 is fantastic because the rs245 now the latest generation octavia rs4 is powered by a 1.4 liter hybrid engine <laughs> and that is the first generation octavia you see a lot of skoda cars here like amazing amount of skoda cars which is unbelievable because people have maintained their old skoda cars now this is the fourth generation of this particular car the fabia they actually have uh, there <laughs> kind of reminds you of the slavia that is not the slavia that is the fabia so it's got uh, lane departure warning lane keep assist it has also look at the ride okay it become little noisy slightly noisy but uh, very mature setup for the ride and handling balance that is the fabia which was sold in india the second generation model was sold in india but because of the high price and low features it did not do well now the fabia is filled with so many features now it's absolutely crazy they've just gone overboard in terms of giving it features so we are just going to get into normal drive mode for the gearbox and the engine is now becoming little shant otherwise the engine was going mad so oh, basically you have three modes for the gearbox that is the most underrated car in the world the skoda yeti that is the combi version of the fabia the old one this was launched in 2021 this is the fourth generation like i was telling you the second generation was sold in india and because i'm talking about it there is the combi version of the same what is this this is oh my god there's so many skoda cars it absolutely blows my mind that okay speed limit has actually increased to 50 km per hour right now this is a car which doesn't make any sound when you're driving it sedately it's got a stop start system as well to boost the fuel efficiency otherwise you will get somewhere between 9 to 15 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style but if driven aggressively that mileage will drop into single digit numbers easily i mean that's a given obviously because it's a turbocharged engine engine is fantastic i don't know if it gets cylinder deactivation technology but it should which will boost the fuel efficiency dramatically now this engine is actually imported in india and they locally make the 1 liter tsi engine in india and that's the reason they can do aggressive pricing if they bring this car to india which seems very doubtful to me because of the length na they cannot cut it they can actually they have the modular mqb a0 in platform this is the mqb a0 so steering could be better in terms of feel and feedback high speed stability is very nice i keep thinking i'm going to downshift i don't get that downshift at all but this is a monte carlo they also have an rs version okay rs version of this car which is the rally to or something of that sort which is producing it will blow your mind okay 285 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque so here we get into sport for the gearbox i matched the throttle immediate downshift the gearbox is really fast fast with shifts and pulls so nicely and strongly as well you really have fun around the corners because this car just goes without any hesitation front end communicates a lot to you and people in india keep going polo 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 guys the fabia is the og drive of fabia and you will realize that this is a car which is as good as the polo if not better so i have obviously driven the latest generation of the polo but on the nurburgring where i was driving it flat out that was the polo gti what a fab car okay but that obviously had the 2 liter tsi engine this is the 1.5 downsizing is happening everywhere in the world which is kind of sad i have also driven the i20 n not the n line the n that is powered by 1.6 liter tgdi motor which is bonkers which is better than the polo in every possible way it's very stiff it's very loud it's crazy with a ton of settings as well but the fabia trust me can hold on to its own german engineering of course very well put together hard plastic something you would expect at this price but nice fun to drive comfortable chassis balance everything is phenomenally done I think it's priced around sixteen thousand pounds in the UK, which is roughly sixteen lakh rupees. So in India, they can definitely get a good price point. 
if they want to and diesel is discontinued in the segment completely now right who offers diesel in hatchbacks nobody really so even if they don't have a diesel although they have a diesel here that octavia you're seeing right in front is powered by a diesel engine yes they still sell diesel here in europe so that's kind of surprising and sad that they're not offering it in india because diesel engine is obviously more frugal and the range of this car was around 760 kilometers on a full tank of fuel which is massively mad now there are two horses going right there in that particular truck up front so we just have to slow down to get some space but making a quick overtake not an issue at all because this car definitely has the performance has the grand maruti is making a big deal of launching a 100 bhp car at 15 lakhs imagine if skoda launches a 150 ps powered fabia hatchback at approximately 17 18 lakhs won't you buy it you would obviously buy it right and if they put it under four meters then it will make a lot of economic viability in terms of taxes but skoda is not going to do that their strategy is not different they want to be premium in every regard and offer premium cars even though the temperature is 10 degrees the camera heated up anyways time for a quick overtake no problem because there's just so much grunt in the engine you can easily make an overtake engine is a joy honestly if this was a manual it would be 10x better probably they offer a manual i'm not too sure but a manual gearbox in this car would be super enjoyable you can just blast through every possible road enjoying wheel spins and all because this dsg box will not let you do wheel spins at all which is very sad because it's all about all this drama of wheel spins and stuff because that's what's actually making a car more enjoyable to drive isn't it So guys, this is my vlog of the Skoda Fabia Monte Carlo. It's a fun, nice car to drive. If you like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's the like button. And hope that Skoda actually launches this car in India. Brakes are super strong, really very sure-footed. This is a fantastic car, which unfortunately won't come to India because of various reasons. But anyways, we have the Kushak and the Slavia with 1.5 TSI engines, which are really very punchy in terms of performance. Bye-bye.